हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ केस ऑफ पोस्ट ट्रोमेटिक लेंस कोलोवोमा or a localized zonular loss and we'll also think about use of ctr fluid misdirection or deviation and uh, how to uh, you know get the idea of extent of subluxation so this is a case of 47 year old male with unilateral cataract as you can see the pupil is kind of mid dilated and the uh, extent of zonular loss is not seen and once i inject intracameral adrenaline you can see now the area of zonular loss is more visible pre or operatively many times we miss these findings unless we are keenly looking for it look for any space between iris and the anterior lens surface and irregularity of the anterior chamber on table you have to assess the extent of uh, this zonulopathy which is there and for that you have to look at the lens age so in this case you can see that the lens age is actually concave and the ends of this age basically the zonules are strong that means normal and that's why the concavity of the lens age so that means it's only localized zonular loss when lens age is more convex then defect is more diffuse and even at the age of visible subluxation the zonules are not normal now first thing i do in this case is uh, inject heavy dispersive ovd and uh, apart from helping in the capsule axis the most important use of this ovd is that it plugs the area of uh, zonular loss and so it prevents fluid from going into the vitreous cavity or into the burgeous space which may lead to increased uh, vitreous surge or posterior capsule bulging upwards or fluid misdirection so i think it is very important in these cases to use a heavy dispersive ovd to plug this area now this is a very small area of zonular loss just two or three clock hours so we can proceed almost normally here during capsule axis just be careful that uh, in the area of zonular weakness the capsule axis should not run too peripheral otherwise sometimes it may just extend in that area when the zonular loss is more we also need a some age of the anterior capsule to put capsular hooks but in this case of course not all these things are needed because the area of subluxation or the zonular loss is very small now i am making some space under this uh, capsule so that i can put a ctr now here we can go ahead even without ctr because this is a very small area of zonular loss but still for ease of maneuvering and avoiding further extension of this zonular loss i prefer to put a ctr you can put it later as well and this also helps in better centration of the iol in the post operative period so i generally go ahead so you can see now i am using macpherson to push this uh, ctr inside and i am using the long sin ski in my other hand to keep the ctr going into the bag and not going into the sulcus and at the end i am holding it with a micro capsule axis forceps so that i can push this ctr right in and then i further rotate it so the those two eyelets are not in the area of subluxation of course it will not matter that much but still if you have these eyelets slightly away from the area of subluxation you can see that the nice configuration of the lens is achieved because in the area of subluxation now there are no eyelets so you have a continuous convexity all around so the phaco investigation is very easy it's almost like a lens aspiration because the patient is young and there is no nucleus sclerosis so i could have done more hydro dissection and hydro delineation and could have hydro prolapsed this nucleus out to make things easier i am using low iop so always use less than 50 mm of mercury iop here which is equivalent to around 65 to 68 portal height so this again further reduces the chance of fluid misdirection that is fluid is not pushed that much into the vitreous cavity or burgeous space and always do this ovd bss exchange where 
when you are coming out just push the ovd so the anterior chamber is maintained now doing cortex aspiration after putting ctr is little tricky so here instead of centripetally you have to go more tangentially so that the cortex actually comes over this ctr and uh, gets aspirated but still it is little bit difficult and you have to be patient now the in the areas where the ctr is not trapping the cortex is very easy to remove it so in so in the area where the cortex is trapped uh, you can also approach that cortex from the posterior aspect i will just show you in this video so once you clear of all the cortex which is not trapped you can just push this uh, ia probe underneath the cortex from the central area and what you do is that you aspirate the cortex not, not just from the anterior aspect which is trapped but also from the posterior part of the cortex so many times you cut off the cortex from both sides and then the rest of the cortex just comes off as it gets uh, untrapped so these are few tricks we can follow for the cortex which is trapped in the ctr and uh, you have to be little patient here and keep pulling this cortex tangentially so that it comes over the ctr and comes out and gets aspirated so uh, if you don't put ctr early on it becomes easier to remove the cortex but then for small subluxation like this it is fine but when the subluxation is more than say 4 clock hours then either you have to use capsular hooks to support the area of subluxation or you have to put CTR to begin with so that during phaco emulsification you don't pull the bag. So uh, if you have trapped cortex just be patient and keep aspirating you can see my vacuum is quite low whenever I am going into the periphery so that I don't uh, pull the bag excessively during this time. So this was a uh, that way very easy case but still we have to have a thought process to avoid possible issues like fluid misdirection and ILD centration in this case. In this case I use the magnificent IOL which is enhanced depth of focus uh, monofocal IOL so it will give a little bit of intermediate vision also to this patient who wants to drive at night as well so I didn't uh, opt for a trifocal or a proper extended depth of focus IOL just went with the enhanced depth of focus IL magnificent thank you so much for watching and do subscribe to my youtube channel 